What's up, Little Marie Sisters? It's Kevin. Welcome to Method Mondays, a series where I talk about the pros and cons of different UX research methods and how to conduct them. Today, unmoderated usability tests. So what are they? Unmoderated studies are done by participants following a set of instructions. They can be done anytime, anywhere, and there's no need for a researcher to be present. If you want to get an idea of what it's like, you can try it yourself. One tip that I give to people is sign up for usertesting.com as a tester. You get paid to test out websites. Tired of complaining about bad websites and seeing nothing happen? Don't just complain about the problem, be part of the solution. It's easy. Join our panel at usertesting.com and help make the web a better place. I did this when I first started out, not to make money, but to get a feel for how other people design their studies. The main pro is that it's really fast to do, easy, and cheap. Cheaper than moderated studies, at least. You can run an unmoderated study with way more participants than you could with a moderated study. And you can get participants from all over the world or the country so you can get a more representative sample. Now, let's talk about the cons. Now, the cons is that you have less control over the study and over the participant. You can't ask follow-up questions. You probably shouldn't be testing confidential designs. You can't read their body language well. And the last bit is, of course, you gotta do this for any study, but especially for unmoderated studies, you gotta write your task out very clearly and very specifically. Because if you launch a study out to, you know, 100 people and people don't understand your tasks, then you've just screwed up because People get stuck and you can't help them. Personally, I love a moderated studies given the right circumstances. But what are these circumstances? So when should you use an unmoderated study versus a moderated study? Well, it depends on a variety of factors from how much time you have, how much money you have, the complexity of the product, whether it's confidential or not, and whether your research questions are lightweight enough, which I'll explain in a bit. First reason to do an unmoderated study is that if you're tight on time and budget. Again, the main pro of unmoderated studies is that it's super fast and super cheap to do. The second reason is if you need a larger sample size for your usability tests. Since you're not moderating it, you can scale it up to a lot more people. The third reason is when your product is out of the conceptual phase. Now, this is my opinion, but I think when you're dealing with concepts or new ideas, you don't know much about it. So I think it's better to do a moderated study with that so that you can ask follow-up questions, you can answer any uh, questions that your participants may have, but you can't do that with an unmoderated study. If your product is still in the concept phase, I would do a moderated study so you can really understand the why. It's not to say you shouldn't do unmoderated studies during the conceptual phase. You can, you can really validate ideas really quickly, but if you really wanna learn if this concept is worth pursuing moderated studies, if we know nothing about it. Fourth reason is if you have lightweight research, if you're gonna ask people about their entire livelihoods or talk about uncontested market space, an unmoderated study probably isn't the best approach. If you're looking for quick iterative usability feedback, this is when you wanna do it. Also, as UX researchers, you're probably gonna to have to balance many different projects at the same time. I, I like to do unmoderated studies if it's more lightweight compared to you know a foundational study. I would devote more resources to that bigger study and have the unmoderated study running in the background. Now, let's say you've decided to run unmoderated studies. How do you do it? So I'm gonna list a couple of tools that you can use that I've used personally. Some of these are not free, but I think Lookback has a free trial. Anyway, let's get into it. Lookback. This has a free trial. I think it's for 14 days. You can try it out. It's a pretty popular tool these days. Um, it records your, your participant screens, their gestures, their facial expressions, and all that. User testing, user zoom, validately. I see these as almost the same tool. They're more robust and they do a lot more things. Things like click tests, card sorts, surveys, um, get heat maps, pretty robust tools. They each have their own participant pools, so you don't have to go looking for your own participants, you can just recruit from their pool, which is very convenient. I found them all to be pretty reliable in terms of recruiting participants really quickly. Like, I've run a moderated studies and finished all the responses in like an hour or two. <laughs> it's great. A lot of you request case studies on how to actually conduct these methods. So if you have an idea for an unmoderated study, comment down below. Maybe I'll pick some of those ideas and conduct it later on in a future video. 
Anyway, the steps for conducting an unmoderated studies is really similar to conducting a moderated one. You're just not there to ask follow-up questions. If you haven't seen my video on usability testing, go click up here or check it out in the description below. So, step zero. <laughs> as bad as UX leaders, you all know what step zero is. What is that? That's right, knowing your objectives and your research questions. Now that we got that out of the way, step one. Open up your online tool and create a test. And usually the online tools guide you pretty well on creating your study. For our purpose, I made a free trial account on Lookback to give you an idea of how it works. So for Lookback, I think you need to recruit your own participants. Otherwise, with other tools like user testing, user zoom, they have their own massive database of testers so that you can take advantage of them. What you'll need to do with those tools is create screener questions so you can filter out who you want to recruit. And it's built right into those tools, so I find them pretty convenient. Next step is to create your tasks. Write out your tasks and be hyper specific of what your participants need to do and what is considered a success, what is considered finish. Because sometimes participants might not know if they're done or not and they'll just jump onto the next task and then you won't get that data. Once you've written these tasks, you wanna pilot the study, test it out with like one or two participants, review those and make sure everything is smooth. After you've piloted the study, then you could run it for reals. After that, it's the same process. Just download the videos, review uh, what participants say, what they do, and look for any patterns. So that's the rundown on unmoderated usability testing for UX research. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Comment down below if you have any ideas, specific case studies that you want me to run for an unmoderated study. I post all things UX research related to help you become the most badass UX leader. Mad love. Peace!